Okay, welcome back. This is Mr. Hassan's Math Channel, and I'm now answering a question from the Pure Mathematics P1 textbook from Chapter 2. This is from the Pearson's at Excel textbook for International A level. So this is a P1 textbook, Chapter 2 Quadratics, and this is from Chapter Review 2. This exercise at the end of the chapter, question number 12. I have been requested by one of the students to answer this question, so I'll do so here. It says, for this question, f of x equals 4kx squared plus 4k plus 2x plus 1, where k is a real constant. So part a says, find the discriminant of f of x in terms of k. Now, the discriminant of a function um, of a quadratic is basically um, something which tells us how many roots it has. Okay, so a quadratic is of the form y equals a constant times x squared plus a constant times x plus a constant ax squared plus bx plus c. And to find the roots of an equation, or a quadratic equation, we have to solve the equation ax squared plus bx plus c equals 0. And one method used in solving such an equation is completing the square from which is derived the quadratic formula, which is x equals minus b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac, all over 2a. And the part of this formula, which is the part which determines or discriminates between how many solutions um, or how many roots there will be to the equation, is this part called the discriminant. This part under the square root sign, this is called the discriminant, because if this is positive, you will have minus b plus a number over 2a, and minus b take away a different number, you know, take away that number, so you'll end up with minus b plus something and minus b take away something. So you'll end up with two different numbers over 2a, and there will be two solutions. And if this number is equal to 0, you'll have minus b plus 0 and minus b minus 0. So in both cases, you'll just get minus b over 2a. So you'll end up with one root, one is called a repeated root. And if b squared minus 4ac is negative, then this will be undefined and you will get no roots. So this, this, this discriminates between how many solutions there will be to this quadratic equation, how many roots it has. So basically here it says find the discriminant of f of x. So we have to just basically find what b squared minus 4ac is. So b squared minus 4ac. Now, the a is a coefficient of x squared and b is a coefficient of x and c is a constant. So in our equation here, we have 4k is our a. That's the constant in front of the x squared. Then our b is 4k plus 2, the coefficient of x, and c is simply 1. So we can say b squared minus 4ac is equal to, b squared minus 4ac is equal to, I'll put that on this line, you're going to have 4k plus 2 squared minus 4 times a, which is 4 times 4k times 1. Okay, now that's going to give us, that's 16k squared. If you expand this, remember it's 4k times itself, so you end up with 16k squared. Then the middle term will be the product of these two doubles, so that's 8k times 2, which is 16k. And the square of that last term, which is plus 4. And then you'll end up with minus 16k as the last part there. So there's the answer for part A. We can simplify it here, we can simplify it next. I'll simplify it here, so I'll say that this is equal to 16k squared um, plus 4. So that's the discriminant. So the discriminant is equal to 16k squared plus 4. Now part B says, <clears throat> by simplifying your answer to part A or otherwise, prove that f of x has two distinct real roots for all non-zero values of k. All right, so basically we've proved here, we found the discriminant. So we know that b squared minus 4ac is equal to 16k squared plus 4. So we've already simplified it in the first part of the question. There's no problem there. Now, what we have to do is we have to basically show that this is always going to be greater than 0 for it to be, you know, it's going to be for all values of k, this is going to be greater than 0. Okay, that's what I have to show. So I know that k squared is always greater than or equal to 0. Okay, for any, for all values of k, for all values of k. Sorry about my bad handwriting there. Let me just move this a bit out of the way. 
Okay, so for all values of k, okay, that's true. And we can therefore say that 16k squared is also greater than or equal to 0 for all values of k. Okay, because whatever you put inside, whatever value of k goes in here, it's going to become either positive or 0 if k is 0. Now, we know that k can't be 0 in this particular question. And this, if k is 0, this will not be a quadratic anymore. So that's why it says non-zero values of k, but that's part C where we have to really explain that so I'll go through that in part C um, and therefore so so if you put any value of k whether it's negative or positive in here it's going to end up being positive okay and if you put um, zero if you put any value of k in here negative or positive you just you know it's going to be positive multiplied by 16 so of course it's going to be something that's greater than zero unless k is zero of course then then it will be um, it will be zero as well but then we know that 16k squared plus 4 is going to be greater than or equal to 4. Okay, for all values of k. So that's, that's also true. So therefore we can say that b squared minus 4ac is greater than 0, is positive, it's definitely going to be positive, okay, for all values of k. Okay, so that's something that's true. Now, part C is asking us um, to explain why f of x cannot have two distinct real roots when k equals 0. So we have our equation f of x equals 4kx squared plus 4k um, plus 2, 4k plus 2x plus 1. So we can say when k is equal to 0, then f of x is going to be 4 times 0x squared. So that's going to be 4 times 0 times x squared plus, you're going to have 4 times 0 plus 2 times x plus 1. So f of x will end up being, basically this will become 0x squared, this will be 2x plus 1. And we can see that this is linear and only has one root. There's only one place this is going to cross the x-axis. So therefore, okay, when k is 0, when k is 0, okay, you can see that it cannot have, then f of x cannot have two distinct roots. Something like that. Have two distinct real roots. Okay, so that's the answer to part C. Okay, so that's basically part B is kind of like a proof kind of question. Okay, we have to show some steps and give a conclusion like this. Um, yeah, so you should mention these kind of points clearly, um, showing clearly that you understand that you know, this is going to always be greater than or equal to zero. So is this, and this is going to be greater than or equal to four. Therefore, the discriminant will, will be greater than zero for all k values, okay, including zero. However, when k is zero, then you basically won't have a discriminant because your equation will change to a quadratic equation, to a linear equation from a quadratic because the coefficient of x squared, you know, um, becomes zero. And we know that for a quadratic, a cannot be zero. A cannot be zero in a quadratic, otherwise it won't remain a quadratic. It becomes linear, as we see here. Okay, so that's the answer to part C, and that concludes this question. I hope that was clear. Um, thank you for watching. Um, other questions that you might want to find from the, this chapter of the book that I have answered, you'll find in the playlist over here. And other questions that you might want to find in general from quadratics of chapter 2, P, P1 quadratics can be found in this playlist over here and you can subscribe to my channel by clicking on the link in the middle thank you for watching and see you soon